It's almost parent-teacher conference time, and I would like to share with you a way that I gather information for, my, um, for myself and information that I can give to parents. I always like to do running records a few times a year, and if that's something that you don't know how to do in reading, it's, I would love to do a video on that if you uh, let me know in the comments if you think that would be helpful to you. I do it very simply and efficiently, and I, I think you would like it, but I put my materials in a binder, and I have a page for their running record. I have a page for math observations, and then I put little post-it tabs that I cut apart um, so that I can easily find the students. And I don't have time to open up my binder and record things. I just jot things on post-its throughout the day, and then at the end of the day, I'll either slap the post-it on the paper or write it in my binder. But I recently, as I shared with you, have been learning how to assess your students for what strategies they have. And I started thinking, this sounds like a math running record. Wait, is that a thing, math running record? I think I just made that up. No, I didn't. Upon some very um, quick research, I found that someone has already created the math running record. I didn't make it up. But it is good information. And again, it's information that I need and that I can share with my parents. So I called my students up one at a time and I had them not only tell me the answer, but how they got the answer. And many of them knew this strategy where they take the nine and turn it into a 10. We know what 10 plus eight is, and then one less than that would be the answer. And many of them knew that, but many of them did not. Um, I had one student who, who said, um, he was just really quiet when I called him up and I said, how did you get the answer? And he was like, counted in my head. Oh, would you like to learn a different strategy? Counting is a strategy, but would you like to learn another one? And he said, yes. So I taught him this little tens trick. And then another student came up to me and she was quiet for a really long time and she came up with the right answer. And I said, well, how did you get it? And she said, well, I counted on my fingers. And I said, well, fingers are a strategy, but, um, but would you like to learn another one? Because, you know, I didn't see her counting with her fingers. She goes, well, I had them behind my back. Had she learned that she didn't want me to see her counting on the fingers? I don't know. The way she had them hidden makes me think that. And she was eager to learn another more efficient strategy. In all, I found six students who had no strategies for adding nine. None they somehow missed the boat. And so I'm so thankful that I caught it because I don't know who else would do that. You know, as they advance through the years, who's going to take the time to find those gaps and fill them? When we give time tests, we get very little information. The most important thing is the answer. That's all we're getting is the answer. We have no idea how they got the answer, what the strategy is that they used, and that is far more important because it's those strategies that they can transfer to other situations and help them to have number sense and math flexibility. So I'm not gonna just leave you with telling you, find out what strategies your students know. I'm gonna give you a little activity game to help you find out that information. It's called Boom, and maybe it's new to you. It was new to me. And you gather your students up. I gathered them in a small group of about four, and um, then you give them the card. So say it's Hannah's turn and it's not a race. When it's Hannah's turn, she's the only one who can answer this question. And um, while I'm hoping she says seven, when she says seven or whatever number she says, I say, how did you get that strategy? How did you get that number? And in this case, I'm looking for something like maybe um, a number plus two. They all know the, one, uh, the number plus one, but do they know the plus twos? So if she says the answer correctly, she gets that card. Then let's say it's Jackson's turn, and I'm looking either here for him to use a double strategy or that nine strategy. And if he says it correctly, he gets the card. And you just keep going. And here I have um, Liam, and I'm looking for him to either use make tens or um, doubles plus one or doubles minus, excuse me, doubles plus two or doubles minus two. Um, and if they don't know it, th those strategies, I show them right then and there so the small group gets it. In this case, I'm looking for make 10. 
and I have a fantastic game on making 10, and I don't think I've done a video on it, so I really need to. It's called Sums of 10. And in your pile of flashcards, you throw in a couple cards called Boom. And when the Boom card appears, you stop and you count up the cards, and whoever has the most cards or the couple people who have the most cards wins that round. And you can either continue or send them away for a new group. But what a fantastic way to take some time to teach them these strategies. Because I said, like I said before, we might be the only ones who are willing to take the time to bridge that gap. Now, where I found this on Pinterest, the teacher had been very creative and had gotten a Pringles can and wrapped it in red paper and gotten a, a pipe cleaner and stuck it in the lid to look like a firecracker for Boom. Darling, but... Um, I don't have time for that, so we're just playing boom with flashcards. Um, and it has been really useful, and I don't feel guilty that I'm not teaching a lesson to those students that I'm not working with because they're doing engaging activities. They can be doing tangrams, tiles, anything, but I'm getting to work with those students who really need me and help them to, to be more fluent with their, with their fact knowledge. So I want to wish you luck as you gather this information and hopefully you'll have time to do it before parent-teacher conferences because then you can teach the parents those strategies so that they can be supporting you with the same thing. You know, I think parents are wanting to help, but oftentimes they don't know. They, they just don't know, but we can be the homeschool connection and help to help them to know how to help us and their students. I'll see you next time.